Hello, this is Onion Creature Update. I'm Owen Carlson, and today we bring you news of a newly released Nintendo Direct featuring information on a variety of different Nintendo video games. Overall, I think this was a pretty solid Direct. I think we had a lot of really fun information, a lot of new releases which look really swell. That being said, overall I think the Direct itself was not particularly engaging and there were a lot of moments where it sagged. Aside from the bigger releases, the smaller releases were, were substantially less interesting than we've seen in previous Directs. So in that respect, it's a little disappointing. However, still an enjoyable time and still had a lot of great stuff in there even if uh, you know, some some dull points, certainly. So we obviously had the direct start off with a bang with Super Mario Maker 2. I was I was very pleased to see this. This game, of course, we had the slopes, first of all, for basically the first thing they showed. They finally have slopes in the game. That's good. Really shocked to see it releasing as soon as June. That's very, very good. And uh, I loved seeing the new uh, Super Mario 3D World uh, visual style, which looked awesome and was really unexpected and I, I would not have guessed that everyone was always saying oh they should add Super Mario Brothers 2 no they had Super Mario 3D World wow what a twist what a, what a unique surprise I thought that was pretty awesome I thought that was a really good way, that was a very good way to start off the direct and I'm very pleased with that and it looks like it has quite a lot of new content and um, I think the original Mario Maker was a bit limited uh, in some of its in some of the things you could do so this looks like it is way more stuff and way more things to do and way more environments to play around with so really looking forward to that love mario maker looking forward to the sequel uh then we have the marvel game i don't know i don't have much to say about this looked like marvel game moving on i mean i mean i mean hey avengers is neat but they're nothing compared to box boy QB got got a big old section of the direct focused on him uh box boy plus box girl I thought that was cool. I, I predicted a co-op box, box boy in my Nintendo sequel video, so I was uh, obviously pleased to see that co-op makes a lot of sense for box boy as a as a as this little puzzle game, um, and obviously Switch multiplayer focus. I was really happy to see box boy return, and he's coming out in April. Um, so I was I was like. I was like, man, wow, we got new Box Boy. Looks like they have a lot of new elements going on. I think perhaps they could have done a bit more with the visuals, but it still looks good, and obviously I'm still looking forward to playing it. We then got a few DLC uh, update news. We got, apparently Captain Toad is getting new DLC, which was pretty weird. I don't have the Switch version, I have the Wii U version, um, since I didn't really feel compelled to get the Switch version, since it didn't have all that much new to it. Uh, but this does make it a little more enticing, uh, now that they've added some co-op stuff. Uh, maybe if I wanted a good game to play co-op, that, that would be a fun thing to do. And they also added like five new levels, which was a little weird. I, I, I would have assumed that if it was DLC they would have added a few more than that, but hey, uh, I mean, I don't own the game, so I can't really, can't really judge that properly. But a uh, bit of an odd choice, but uh, cool to see that game getting continued attention, because Captain Toad is is excellent, and any anything any attention he gets is is well deserved. Uh, we also had a, a little 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 segment of Smash news. Didn't see too much, uh, but we got Joker. Got a little glimpse of the Joker man. He looks like he does. Uh, looks like he's a character in the game, I think. Um, so that's good. Uh, we start entering the the anime portion of the direct, <laughs> in which we got uh, Bloodstained which is Castlevania but not, and then we got Dragon Quest Builders 2 and Dragon Quest XIS, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Definitive Edition, and uh, continuing that we have Disney Tsum Tsum Festival, which I thought was a bit of an odd game to give attention to, but I guess people like those little worm things that are shaped like Disney characters, I guess that has some sort of appeal to it. And we have, uh, they had a, a little update for Starlink, which I thought was kind of neat. I don't think Starlink has been that popular. I've seen it's gone on pretty big sale, so I, I might pick it up if, if I see it for a low enough price. Um, but, you know, cool that they're adding more Star Fox content. But I obviously have not played the game, so I cannot really give my detailed thoughts on that. But I'm glad to see it's continuing to be updated, because uh, I think I think the Star, Fox, the Star Fox stuff in that game was what really excited people. So glad they're doubling down on that. Um, then we had this Stardew Valley thing, Rune Factory 4, Rune Factory 5 in development. Don't really know much about that. 
more anime stuff is cool. Um, and it's, when I say anime games, it's not that that's a bad thing. It's just that we got a lot of games with a very similar visual style, one after another. So they kind of blend together. And it's not that it's a bad thing to have an anime visual style. Like I, I have some really, some of my favorite games have anime visual styles. Looking at you, Xenoblade 2, hey, <laughs> you, you. But when you have a lot of them together, again, like the characters have the same face. And so they start to, start to merge into one. I think th that could have been paced out better. Uh, so maybe cut out a few of those and replace them with something that looks at least a little visually different. And we had Oki Onikai. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World trailer stuff. I, I, I liked that. They released the demo for Yoshi's Crafted World, which I played a little bit. It's really spectacular. I was definitely interested in the game, but this is definitely um, put it up higher on my priorities list. Actually playing it, it's like, ooh, this is, this is pretty. It's got that. It's got some sweet HD Rumble implementation. So do check that out if if you're interested in uh, phenomenal HD Rumble. It has that in in droves. Uh, then we had our our Fire Emblem Three Houses update. Uh, it, it, it looked like a Fire Emblem game. Um, I didn't really see much about it that was like too distinct or, or, or bad or good. It was just like, yep, that's Fire Emblem. The visuals definitely looked really nice. Um, some of the cutscenes looked pretty pretty cool. Uh, I like the, the character designs well enough. I think that should be a, should be a good time coming out in July. Uh, that was about what I would have expected. Good for, good for you, Intelligent Systems. You made a you made a, a Fire Emblem game. That's that's good. Now we had our, our uh, the, the the feature of the direct the the highlight of course, uh, Tetris Battle Royale uh, or as it is officially referred to Tetris 99. Uh, this is a little incentive for you to buy uh, Nintendo Switch Online alongside the NES games. It's a free little Tetris thing, where you play Tetris with like 98 other people. You play Tetris with quite a few other people uh, simultaneously, and you, you little battle each other. And I uh, played that a little bit. It's, it's pretty interesting, pretty pretty fun. You know, Tetris is fun. Uh, my complaint would be it doesn't seem to have any local modes, like any local multiplayer, and you can't. Doesn't seem like you can play single player. So that's not really going to be great for when you're on the bus or on the on the train or on the on the airplane when you don't have any Wi-Fi and you want to play Tetris. But then the Tetris game says you have to be connected to the Wi-Fi to play. So yeah. And also, I would have liked a mode where you can play with friends online because that would have been cool. But it doesn't seem like it has that, but it's also free, so you can't complain too much. But maybe that would have been nice. -y. Then we had Dead by Daylight, Delta Rune releasing on Switch. Uh, I played a little bit of Undertale on the, the old MacBook um, a while back, and it seemed pretty neat. Uh, I might try this since it's free, but uh, I don't know. I like the trailer where they had the dog censoring spoilers or something. That was pretty funny. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a game. It's not particularly my thing, but I think it's cool, and I respect it. And we had our Damon X Machina little segment, and for this we got another demo, and I uh, I also have downloaded this demo, and it seems it seems okay. Yeah, I was I'm a little iffy on the controls, and the visuals don't seem that great. They seem a little muddy, um, but we'll see. It's also it's still in development, obviously, so uh, it, it seemed decent. Definitely, definitely had some potential there. It seemed like it could be interesting. And we had the racing game Grid Autosport. Uh, uh, you know, it's a game. It looked pretty. I, li I liked the little little cars. Cars are cool. Maybe I think people like cars, right? We then had Hellblade: Sassoon Sacrifice. Uh, then we had a few little little montages, some third-party stuff. We had that Unravel game, which I think was released or like they showed it at EA's conference a while back at E3. And when I saw it, I was like, that has to be on Switch. The red and blue characters, and it's multiplayer. So why is this not on Switch? So now it's on Switch. That's the, There you go. Uh, Mortal Kombat. Yep. Glad that's releasing on the Switch as well as other consoles. But, yes, it's, it's game two. Um, the Assassin's Creed remastered. Yeah, if you, if you like that, good. That's good. Uh, then we have the, the Final Fantasy thingies. We got... Uh, I think Final Fantasy IX released today, and then Seven is coming in March, and then the, the Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, the, the incorrect Mystery Dungeon series. Uh, if we lived in a just society, that would have been Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but alas, it is, it is you play as the little bird creatures, not Pokemons, um, so that's unfortunate. And we had uh, Astral Chain, which I saw this trailer, and I was like, hey, that looks like a Platinum game. And lo and behold, it was. I mean, you can. I mean, you can kind of just tell by the gameplay style. 
they have a, platinum games do have a bit of a distinct look to them, so not too shocking. But I think this, I think this is a, some sort of Switch exclusive or some sort of something. Um, I thought I thought it looked pretty cool actually. I thought this uh, this one stood out um, as one of the neater games, one of the games that I thought, wow, that's kind of neat. Whereas some of them I didn't think that, but that one I did a bit. And our final thing that they revealed, which I was very pleased to see, was the Link's Awakening remake. They first showed off sort of a 2D animated segment uh, sort of to introduce this, which I thought was fantastic. Although uh, it kind of threw me off a bit because when you see the actual game in, in motion, it looks very different. And that's not a bad thing because I think this game's visuals are fantastic. It reminds me a lot of Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. It looks sort of clay-like. Especially that's that 2D segment where Link is jumping on Goombas. I like how Link has little dot eyes. I think that's really cool. I love the distinct visuals of this game, and um, this is definitely now one of my most anticipated. I have not played the original Game Boy Link's Awakening. I, I really loved A Link Between Worlds and A Link to the Past, and so I really am looking forward to this, um, especially A Link Between Worlds. That's uh, my second favorite Zelda game behind Breath of the Wild. I love that 2D style, and it was really refined in my view in um, A Link Between Worlds. So this is so awesome to see the 2D Zelda series continued, and the visual style is fantastic. Like, this is the kind of thing I want to see out of other Nintendo franchises. Um, I really love seeing unique visuals and visuals that, like, do something interesting, and that's really what this Link's Awakening uh, visuals are doing. I think one other option would have been to stick to more of the 2D style. I think that also would have worked, but I also really, really do love what they've what they've done with this sort of toy-like thing they have going on, and I think it really fits the game, because it is... It's a fairly goofy game by Zelda standards. Like, there's Chain Chomps. I think Kirby makes an appearance. Like, there's there's a lot of these little cutesy, like, cameos and stuff like that. But I think, I think having a sort of playful art style really works out for this one. And I'm absolutely looking forward to that game. Wow, give me a release date, guys. Come on. Uh, so, uh, so th that, was, that was all the stuff in the Direct. There was a good amount of good stuff in it. A lot of really good stuff. Um, there was some great stuff. There was some good stuff. There was some stuff I don't super care about, but it's cool. I think overall it's success. Um, I think the big problem with this Direct was how long it has been since the last general Nintendo Direct, so I think expectations were gener you know, naturally going to be high. Um, and I think, I think they definitely met expectations. Uh, there was a lot of really great reveals. It's just that there are a lot of games have been heavily rumored or people just think are coming for whatever reason. Like Metroid Prime Trilogy, that's a game that's heavily rumored, didn't make any sort of appearance in this Direct. Personally, I'm on the team where I don't think that's actually happening, but hey, I've been wrong before in my life, so who knows, maybe maybe that'll show up down the line. But if it were me, I'd be voting uh, not, not a thing that's going to go down, but hey, who knows. In the Starlink DLC, I forgot to mention this, they showed a racing mode, I believe, and I was like, oh, is that what people thought Star Fox Grand Prix was, perhaps? It would be kind of weird if Nintendo had a Star Fox racing game in development and then released a Star Fox racing mode in a game which has Star Fox characters. Like, that would be quite the coincidence. So I think there might be some sort of correlation between that Starlink update and the Star Fox Grand Prix thing we've heard about. Perhaps, maybe, I don't know. Um, might be random, might be totally coincidental. I would say the, the biggest omission, um, and it's a game we know that's coming out this year, is Animal Crossing for the Switch. Not here at all. I kind of had a feeling it wouldn't be, just because that would be too good to be true. I have a feeling that this game is coming later in the year, based on the fact that it wasn't shown in this Direct. And if it was coming sooner, they probably would have shown it. So, got a feeling that that one's gonna be either late summer or uh, fall, winter time frame. And we'll probably see more on that a bit later in the spring, I would assume. I don't think they'll wait till E3. I think we'll see it before E3. But yeah, that was definitely an omission. Disappointed not to see it. I mean, like, I, I just don't feel like there would have been any harm in, in showing it. I think I think people would have just just give me, give me like an idea of what to expect because we've literally seen no gameplay footage and really have no idea what direction the game's going. So it would have been nice to see something, even if it was just another small teaser. I would have liked to see it, but I'll live without it. We got some other good stuff that'll, that'll keep me satiated till then. The other the other big game that we also know is coming this year is Pokemon Gen 8. And that was not here. I did definitely didn't expect uh, Gen 8 in this Direct at all. Pokemon games uh, don't tend to debut in uh, Directs unless they're spin-offs. 
made sense that we didn't get one here. I'd, I'd say we'll be getting Pokemon Gen 8 news within the next two months, probably. Probably somewhere between now and May. Not offended by that, and uh, you know, I th I'm, I'm looking forward to that, certainly. And uh, perhaps I'll make an Onion Creature update on that. Wow, wouldn't that be special? So I just wanted to do this video in this, this new format just for the heck of it. Just try it out. Might do more videos in a similar format, perhaps. And uh, apart from that, I think this concludes this Onion Creature update. That's all the news for today, and I, I will be leaving you now. This, yeah, we're, 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 we're heading out now. This has been Onion Creature Update.